What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to Boston's Banter, where the sports are wicked and the banter is pisser. I'm your host, Frank the Bank. With me, as always, Keith K. Lava Bacaba. How we doing, everybody? I like to call him Noma or Broma Garcia Pyro. <laughs> nice to see you, bro. What do you think of you. our first episode? It was great, man. I thought we did a really well job, and I'm looking forward to keeping this thing going. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. Yes, sir. Formerly trending news, we're changing the name to Wicked Pissa News. So, Keith's going to start us off with the Wicked Pissa News. Let's get it started. Yeah, so we lost another legend, Frank, this past week. Uh, baseball legend Willie Mays passed away at the age of 93. God mm. bless, man. 93, 93. years old. Played for the Giants and the Mets. He was a 24-time All-Star, ranging from the early 50s to the early 70s. It's uh, 24-time All-Star. 660 home runs. That's sixth all-time, and he's a Hall of Famer. So rest in peace to him. You know, he was definitely a big staple in the MLB community. So rest that in peace. That over-the-shoulder catch. I mean, oh, yeah, it's man. just one of the best plays ever. Oh, yeah, 100%. God, God rest. Oh, moving over to NBA news. Uh, the, there's a, the season just ended, and we already have a trade. Yep, I saw that. The Thunder have acquired two-time all-defensive guard Alex Caruso from the Bulls for Josh Giddy. What is going on, man? The season just ended. It literally just ended. You know? Yeah, I, I, didn't, just... I didn't expect to see a move that quick. But that hey, was quick. The gears are turning in the free agency and those trades. The trades are going to be crazy. I can already see it coming. I saw that. And, you know, the, the Lakers just signed J.J. Redick as their coach. That's well. right. I saw that. That's right. I saw um, the Lakers sign J.J. Redick as their head coach. They missed out on UConn's uh, head coach. I forget his name. Sorry about that. Um, oh, Hurley. Hurley, Hurley, yes. Yeah, Dan Hurley's great. I mean, he. I thought he would jump in but he's got a good thing going at UConn I gotta say he, he wants to chase that repeat uh, turn down 70 million I mean oh, that tells you right there he's got his eyes set on repeating set, yeah, with UConn set, so yeah. that's for sure right there but there was some other pretty big news in the NBA this week wasn't there oh yeah, oh, yeah Frank that's right that's right speaking of the season and ding yeah hey, bro what's going on Frank ho- hold up a second man I'm wearing the wrong gear you that's more like it NBA champions, baby. Let's go. Let's go. The Celtics are raising banner number 18 to the rafters. Most all time, Frank. We know that. Who did we just beat out of the tie? The Los Lakers. Angeles Lakers. But if I want to get technical here real quick, the Lakers, man, they only got 12 championships in L.A. That's, That's a right. fact. The other five were in Minneapolis. So real quick, while we're talking about the Celtics, Frank, it kind of baffles me through all the disrespect in disregard for all the dogs that we had on this team. Oh, yeah. All the talk. Jason Tatum's a fraud. Jalen Brown's overrated. Alan Jewell, KP Soft, Cakewalk to the finals. Blah, 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 blah. You know what's funny? All the fans were chanting, we want Boston. We they, want they Boston. They got us, all right. They got Boston. They also got those L's. And so didn't you, Kyrie. Made it much that much sweeter, I told Frank. you. I told you on our last episode he was going to give us a ring. He was going to give us all. Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, don't get me wrong. He almost had a double-double in that game five. You know, 15 points, nine assists. Luka had 28 and 12. He's always going to get his. No, Luka was unbelievable. If you look at his points and everything he did, he led the team in all the categories. Well, first we got to... Of course. Of course. Let's Let's celebrate. Let's Let's celebrate. Number 18 coming to the Raptors, everybody. There it is. So, talking about MVP, Jalen Brown. Yes, sir. Do you think it should have been Tatum? Well, it's funny you say that because this is the first time in NBA Finals history that a player that led in points, rebounds, and, and assists, assists did not win Finals Didn't MVP. Win I agree. First time. That I mean, was a little bit of a surprise. I Love JB. Very, yeah, JB played well. I thought in the beginning of the series, he was, you know, clear cut mm-hmm. for me. I mean, Drew Holiday made a case in the first couple games, oh, too. Oh, yeah, certainly. But getting to the rack. Tatum, towards the end, really picked it up. I mean, that last game, 30, 30-something points, 31 points, I think he had. He, he, just, he played really well. Yeah. But I, I just thought... Yeah, again, the three major categories. I know Jalen Brown led the team in steals, but it wasn't like that big of a difference. No. Um, And he he had a little bit more, uh, maybe two more blocks than Tatum did in in the finals. But again, it was, I was very surprised. I will say his defensive presence was very intense. And, you know, if we really needed a shot made or a drive, it, you know, I felt like it went through Jalen more than Tatum, except the last game. I thought Tatum really took it to the hoop right, and took was. it at him. But he was not that aggressive in the first four games. Um, but I was very surprised by that. So with Jason Tatum, like we were saying, he led the team in every you know category, rebounds, scoring, assists. He didn't get the finals MVP. But like you said, he was kind of changing up the way he had to play the game. Everybody wants to see him go out there and get 35, 40 plus a night. 
he is a great player, don't get me wrong, but obviously when the shooting for him isn't working, he's doing whatever he can to help the rest of the team facilitate and rebound. You yes, know, he, you, yes. notice, you notice he was getting to the rack more? They weren't stopping him when he no, was getting there, man. I was glad he stopped arm. shooting threes. His threes weren't on point they weren't. as much as they were in the regular season. And he had a but double, he could double. not be stopped. No. That, especially the last game. They, right. He got to the rack a lot. He did. You know, so I, I was kind of surprised by that. I'm, gonna look, I'm looking at these stats here, Frank, in the whole starting five either had a double-double or was a two rebounds or two assists away from a double-double. Yep. They were playing their heart zone. After that game, four loss, let's face it, that was embarrassing. 38 points. Oh, it was crazy. That, that was, Third that worst was, in history. Yeah, in that, that was pretty bad. They responded the best way any Boston team should. Now with the champs again, baby. Oh, it was awesome. It was it was amazing. For yes, sure. sir. Yes, sir. Um, but uh, speaking about one Boston team and going to another, Frank, you got any Red Sox news for us? Yeah, we don't talk a lot about the Red Sox. I mean, we're mainly football, obviously, the you know, we, Boston in particular, but Red Sox, obviously. We love the Sox. Um, they're actually playing, like, overachieving this year in my opinion they're a very very young team yeah surprisingly um, yeah they're fun to watch they're fast they have some pieces for the future i mean right now they're 40 and 35 they've won five in a row eight out of the last 10 and they're only one game back of a wild card spot if you told me that before the season with this roster i would have thought i would have said, said the you know same what I, mean? thing. I really just Certainly. didn't think that was gonna be what they were about so uh we're third in the division obviously we the, the orioles and the yankees you know the yankees are stacked the orioles have a really young good team but for us to be only a game back of a wild card or game and a half back now maybe if the royals won last night i'm not sure i'm very intrigued by them and they're they're very very fun to watch you know i agree i mean I don't follow much baseball. Love love all sports, but like you said, it's definitely a surprise seeing this young team. You know, a team they had to blow up essentially from the last time they won the World Series. Had all these great players: Mookie Betts, uh, Andrew Benintendi. Oh, they had some good you, people. Yeah, you know what I mean? Great. And now they're kind of starting a form formula where you know they have these young players. We have Tyler O'Neill, who's pretty sure that was a great team, great team in home runs correct and uh, he, uh, he got injured he's uh, but he was ma he was mashing them. yeah and then he, he came he, back and he's hitting them again and then devas went on a, a hot streak Rafael a Devis. lot of a lot of this <laughs> came from drafting in in prospects it wasn't like these huge signings i mean a lot of it came internal which you like i love what duran's doing the kids unbelievable he's really fun to watch he's super fast i mean our our defense has been unbelievable especially the outfield you know, so it's just been, they're a fun, young team to watch. I think the future is really bright. I don't think we're winning it this year by any means, but right, right. it'll be a treat if they make the playoffs. You know, it would really would be. Yeah, so it'd be nice to see them back in the playoffs. Absolutely. So, um, any other news you got for us, Frank? I mean, something we haven't really talked about came out a couple weeks ago. Caitlin Clark and... Uh, Beast. Yeah, oh, she, she's great. Unbelievable. Um, the Olympic team... She was not put on it. So really, there's obviously there's some people did not know that. Yeah, so there's some people that were mad about it, and there's some people that said, "Well, she's young, and you know the other people deserve to be there too," which they do. Mm -hmm. They all do. There's two sides to it. I thought it was a missed opportunity to bring visibility, if you will, or viewership sponsors to WNBA and women's basketball in particular. I know it's the Olympic team, but every single woman on the team is a WNBA player. So what, I mean, a lot of people know who Caitlin Clark is, right? Oh yeah. Could you name any other WNBA players? Angel Reese. Yep. Uh, Cameron Brink. And Brittany Griner. I'm not, I'm not, not say, to sound ignorant. It's just those no, are the yeah, really I mean, big names I know. Yeah, Brianna Stewart is one of them. I mean, Aja Wilson, who's won two of the last four MVPs. So there's not a... I can't even tell you how many teams are in the WNBA. And I'm sure you couldn't tell me how many teams, I, right? I unfortunately couldn't, Frank. Exactly. So the visibility that Caitlin Clark brings. I had friends, and I'm sure Tim and Kevin are watching this, that went to the game the rematch against LSU in the semifinals last year. Wow. It was in New York. I almost went, but I never thought in my life I'd want to go see a college game. But I, never mind the fact that I have an Iowa Hawkeyes hat on. <laughs> Represent, because man. Because of Caitlin Clark. Okay, so these are things. She brings visibility to WNBA and the players. And right. she just has that transcendence. She, she just passed Pete Maravich for all time points in college basketball yeah, history. Yeah, that's right. I feel men, okay. Men's and, and women's. women's. That's, so that's insane. To, to lose that visibility 
is is kind of crazy to me. And a, a guy I follow for real estate, Jared James, said it best: visibility trumps ability. And what that to me means is that even if she didn't play, she'd still be talked about a lot, and it would still bring extra sponsors, you know, more views. That's what that's how you know, there's always this talk about the the NBA gets more money than the WNBA, and the NBA funds the WNBA, but. There's obviously that pay gap, that disparity between what the men make and the, and the women make. It's, you know, something that could have closed the gap a little. I mean, it's, it may, probably will never be as popular as the NBA. It's been around for so long. But I just think that it was a real big mistake on their part to not bring her Absolutely. just for that reason. You know, Absolutely. I don't know if it was like the players or the coaches or if it was jealousy or envy or whatever it might be. And, you know, she's actually Aja Wilson, who I was just talking about and her are the top two vote getters for the WNBA All-Star game right now. She's a rookie and, and she's, she's you know she's team. been good, but their team's been, you know, so-so. Right. It's not like she's tearing up the world, it's just who she is. She just gets the attention. Right. And and another thing that you probably I didn't know this. I looked it up because of Caitlin Clark and <laughs> the fact that this Olympic women's team has been what they have been. Do you know how many medals they have? can't say that I do. Okay, so they started playing in 1976, okay? Every okay. four years we play. So that would have been 12 times. This would have been the 13th. In 1980, we did not play. We boycotted the Olympics because Russia invaded a, another country. Big, you know, big surprise there. Um, so we did not play that year. But every single year that the women have played in the Olympics, they have won a medal. Every single year. They have 11. They've won nine gold, one silver, and one bronze. They've won seven straight gold. Very impressive. I okay. did not know that. I had no idea. But they don't need Caitlin Clark on the team. They're obviously great. So of that's, course, yeah. That's, again, where it comes in. There's two sides to it. But I just think they missed an opportunity to bring people to the sport, to bring attention to the sport. You know, all news is good news you hear, right? Of course. Whether it's bad or good. Any publicity it's is good publicity. Publicity, exactly. So I just thought they really did miss an opportunity to bring more of that. I'm hearing stories of kids in high school or even elementary school in gym class shooting three-pointers. They're not saying Steph Curry or Kobe. They're saying Caitlin Clark. They're saying Clark, yeah. Exactly. You know what I so mean? It's even my, me and my wife are watching the games. I watched the entire game against Angel Reese last year, the, the rematch. She beat her. I wanted Caitlin Clark to win the championship. She did not. They right. lost. But yeah. I watched both of those games. I can't say that I've ever done that in a college woman's you know, I might have watched a couple games here and there. The, the UConn women were great to watch, and you know, Diana Taurasi and, and them. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I just she's brought such a visibility to the WNBA, and I don't know if people are jealous about it, other players or what, but I think they should really embrace it. I really think that's something that they could embrace. I mean, that's I a agree. lot of these leagues focus on the stars of the league and the people that are bringing, you know, fans to the league. Right. That's what you have to do. Oh, so I, I just think the Olympic team really missed an opportunity there. Um, but yeah, that, that was really the only other trending news that I had at the moment. So let's get into uh, the Foxborough focus. This is our segment where we kind of talk about the Patriots. Last week we did the uh, oh, schedule. I'm in the wrong gear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One second. I'll be right back. Yeah, you know, so recently, yesterday, the Patriots re-signed running back Ramondre Stevenson. He agreed to a four-year deal, $36 million, 17 of that is guaranteed. A good day right there. Uh, he's 17 million. So obviously, Ramondre Stevenson, he's been a very good running back for us. Boom. <laughs> last year, he got injured. You know, he had 619 rushing yards last year, four touchdowns, but he, he still catches passes like he's a receiving back. The guy had 38 catches last year. Go back a year before, 2022. The man had 1,040 rushing yards, five touchdowns, but here's where it gets crazy with him being like a bull horse running back. You know what I mean? He had 69 catches that year for 421 yards and an additional touchdown. Unreal. So he's catching passes, man. He's not just running the ball hard, especially on the goal line. He's catching passes out of the backfield. I think he was worthy of this contract. I'm glad we locked him up. Oh, I yeah. mean, through three years in New England, Frank, he's got almost 2,700 rushing yards, 14 touchdowns, 121 receptions, 782 receiving yards yep. in, in, in that one receiving touchdown. So I'm going to be honest. I'm glad we got him locked up. What are your thoughts on Ramondre? This is what I think. You got to do it. Right. 
He's going to be a staple for us. So Stevenson's extension is a win for the present, but the Patriots are looking towards the future. Enter the 2024 draft class. All right, I like it. Let's so, go. 2024 NFL draft. Patriots had a very high draft pick, first time in what seemed to be 30 years. Well, you got Brady winning all the Super Bowls. Right, of a of perennial course. division winner. Pretty, pretty sure that last high draft pick was Drew Bledsoe too. Correct? Oh yeah, pretty, I think, yeah, I think pretty right. certain. So this year, obviously, it was new territory. We had a top three draft pick. We had the third overall draft pick, and with our first pick, we went with UNC quarterback Drake May. Now. You know, going into this draft with all the talent that was in those first five picks, not going to lie, Drake May was not my first option. I, I really didn't want him. I either wanted them to get Jaden Daniels out of LSU, a very yes. good mobile quarterback. Winner. Well, let's face it. Nowadays, I mean, you got edge rushers running a 4-4, 40-yard dash. Oh, yeah. I mean, you need some mobility on your quarterback side now. The game is transcending to where these guys that are on the defensive side could run routes. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, or if, if we didn't get him, I was kind of hoping Marvin Harrison Jr. I like Marvin Harrison. He was the guy I really wanted. Yeah. I thought the Patriots should have possibly... Well, I wish they signed a veteran or went after jo, uh, you know Justin Fields. I mean, right. Justin Fields. They, you know, you kind of knew Chicago was not trading the first pick. They knew they were going Caleb Williams. So you could have got. I mean, Justin Fields went for nothing. He really he went, went for, for nothing. nothing to and the you could have got him and you. You know, Drake May is a risk. I mean, it looks like he's got some talent, but he also looks like he might be a bust. So right, you know, at least um, with Marvin Harrison. He's the number one. He, he Instead of having the third best quarterback, you could have had the first best wide receiver. And he looks like he's going to make an impact his first game. Let's face it, man. He grew, oh, up, gonna be he an grew up under Marvin Harrison Sr. Yep. I'm sure as a kid, Marvin Harrison Sr. had him working out, learning the routes. You know, he's obviously got yeah, hands oh, from doing sure. that his whole life. His dad's <laughs> Marvin Harrison. Yeah, so, animal. So I'll be honest, though. We, we got to embrace it. It's a new era, new head coach. You know, we went with Drake May. I'm hearing the good intangibles. You know, I hear that he's got a cannon for an arm. Well, that's one of the pluses for cannon sure. for an arm he, he actually works well within the pocket one of his problems is though once that blitz starts coming he gets nervous he gets rattled he, they need oh, to, yeah. he needs to work on his footwork his footwork yes and yes. also his decision making I me mean, some of the interceptions you've seen him throw at unc it's kind of like you'd sit back and think where are you throwing that to look yes. like mac jones against the colts last year some of the <laughs> interceptions i'm like dude his decision making yep that was something else i wrote down his arm strength and playmaking ability is big i mean a few people have talked about him being similar you know stature to Josh Allen right. Justin Herbert I mean he's big he's got a strong arm he's quasi mobile he can, he can move I mean he's not slow um, but he's like you said he's young he only started 26 games right right so that makes you very nervous okay I mean of course Merrill Hodge draft analyst I don't know if it's ESPN or NFL now but he <laughs> he said and it's kind of funny <laughs> that he's the kind of player if you draft will get you fired Oh, so wow. now this guy has predicted some things that were good and some things that were bad. He predicted the Johnny Manziel draft pick would I mean, be a disaster, which I, it was. I, I saw that coming but from miles away. A worse as well. prediction was that he pr predicted Brian Brom would be a better quarterback than Aaron Rodgers. Now Aaron Rodgers Brian is probably a, ten, a top ten quarterback of all time. So I don't know how you know good we can go on Merrill Hodges. I mean, I hope yet. he's I hope he's wrong because this is for our future. But again, you know that's where they went. We got to embrace it, and you know we're gonna root for Drake May. I really don't see I, him start. I this hope year. he tears it up. I don't think he, I don't want him to start this no, year. I want let, him to let learn Jacob the system. Let Jacoby start. Let Jacoby play. I mean, even if Zappy had to come in, let Drake May have a year under his belt. Right. You know, I don't want to ruin this kid's career. He's very young. Twenty six games started. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what happened a couple of years ago. Trey Lance was a third overall pick. He only started 17 games in college, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. he's going to probably pick. be a career backup. Yeah, they the ruined his. Well, that and they started him pretty early. Yeah, they you did. Know, I want him. I want Drake May to do really well, and he could be really good. This is so. a time to develop him, and that's what they're going to do. But so Drake May with the first pick, and with the second round pick, pick number 37, we took a wide receiver by the name of Jalen Polk out of Washington. Yep. Now this is where it gets interesting. So going into this round two. There were still some pretty big names left on the board. I shouldn't say big, actually, but, you know, names that were stuck out more than Jalen Polk from yes, Washington. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not taking anything away from him, but we acquired that pick from the Chargers, and they used that to actually draft Lad McConkey. Mm -hmm. 
Again, interesting name. Yeah. So, <laughs> we talk so about him every episode. I, it's just a funny <laughs> name, man. I can't help I it. I love it. <laughs> so Jalen Polk, we we took him in. I'm very I was surprised because there was another receiver on the board by the name of Adonai Mitchell who got picked up by yep. the Colts. And he came out of Texas. He looked like a physical beast, yeah, man. Yeah, he looks good. I thought for sure the Patriots were gonna settle for one of these big play, you know, big body receivers. Not taking anything away from Jalen Polk, but he stands at 6'1. Good route runner. He's and he, a great route and runner. And they say he he's very good with going up for contested catches as well. Right. Some of his problems are his explosiveness off the line, as yes. well as he really struggles against press man coverage. He gets forced yeah. out of bounds a lot, they were saying. Yeah, I mean, he's only got a 4 5 2 40. He's not going to you know blow you off the line by any means, but he, right. he is a good route runner. A lot of comparisons have him to Jacoby Myers, who had a great year last year. He was always very consistent for us. Yeah. So certainly. what we're trying to implement, I mean, I, I think it... There's some upside there, but there was, you know, there was a couple people we could have went with instead. Yeah, like I said, I thought it would have been Adonai Mitchell, but again, you got to embrace the pick. This is a new era. Who knows? This guy could be an absolute beast for us. You never know. That's why I love about the NFL draft. Some, you see these guys, you don't know that they're going to do good, and they end up becoming Pro Bowlers. Yeah, I think. I mean, again, we need the route runners. I mean, we've tried to pick up guys, you know, in the past yeah, that have just haven't panned out. Right. So if you find a guy that can write, run the right routes and run a good route, that's going to help. Right. You know, so let's hope that 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 pick works out. Absolutely. So then we go over to the third pick in the third round, pick number 68. We took a tackle by the name of Caden Wallace out of Penn State. Not going to lie, I actually really like this pick. We had a focus on the offensive line. You know, we're already dealing with injuries as it is right now with Cole Strange being hurt, Michael Onwenu, who we actually recently re signed. He's dealing with some injuries. So they wanted to focus on, obviously, solidifying that offensive line. Now, just because he's a third-round pick doesn't mean he's not a good offensive lineman. I mean, I'm hearing great things about this kid, especially when it comes to his balance off the line to block. He has uh, yeah. he has edge rushers on their fingertips sometimes. This kid's good. He's going to be good. He had 40 starts <clears throat> at Penn State. But all I can think about with this name, I love his name. We got a lot of cool names that we on the team. I love Drake May, Jalen Polk, you know, Caden Wallace. We got some other cool names coming up too. But all I can think about is Mel Gibson and Braveheart is William Wallace. Freedom! <laughs> when I hear Caden Wallace. Kaden's and I hope the every single time play. he blocks somebody and throws them down, he yells, Freedom! Right in his face. Hey, he plays for the Patriots, man. I mean, I know that's not the Mel Gibson movie we're talking about, but he can put the blue on his face like he did in Braveheart. So cool. That would I love, be awesome. I love the name, and he is actually a very good prospect. So. Oh, certainly. So, <laughs> Excited to see what he can do. Yep. So then we go over to the fourth pick in round four, pick 103. We took a guard by the name of Layden Robinson. Great out of, name also. Out of Texas <laughs> A&M. I don't really know too much on him. I just know the guard position. We're a little thin right now, so I'm hoping he can come in and provide a spark for us. He's a great run blocker. Needs work in the pass blocking department. So okay. that's, that's huge. Uh, we like to run, so that helps the run, but he is, he does need some work in pass protection is what I saw. Texas A&M Aggies, a guard, they may actually try to move him a little bit around too, but you know, he's supposed to be pretty good in run blocking, so that's what I've read about I'm glad to too, hear so. that. That's yeah. going to be a primary focus of our offense is running the ball this year, so yep. that's great to hear. He can do that. Got to work on that pass blocking though. <laughs> and with the fifth pick in round four, we took a receiver by the name of Javon Baker out of UCF. Oh, yeah. I like this kid. Me too. I think he's got a lot of potential, and also I I don't see him really being... He has a lot of confidence. He, he, he's telling people that show up to the game. I make people in wheelchairs stand up. I'm hoping he backs <laughs> those words up, man, because I we like definitely it. need help at receiver. And these two young guys, you know, Polk and him, hoping they provide a spark with the guys of the likes of K.J. Osborne, Kendrick Bourne, Pop Douglas, Hunter Henry. You know, I'm hoping we get the chemistry going, and I'm hoping these guys really work out because it would be great to finally see some success with receivers we draft. Yeah, I like Douglas. Douglas played well last year. I think he's a really good prospect as well this year, but as in his second year. But, I, I mean, Baker should be good. He actually went to Alabama first, I, and I he actually, transferred. I so, saw I mean, that. you know how good the Alabama receivers have been. So right. they recruited this kid, so there's got to be something there Obviously, that they yeah. saw. He's a physical wide out and he's also a very good route runner so i mean ucf was always putting up points this kid is it could be a really it could be a really good pick of the draft for us yeah honestly, yeah so. a lot of analysts too said that that was one of the patriots best picks in the later rounds was him and i was you know a lot of people even said they were surprised he fell to round four i was surprised by that too um it's kind of crazy and that, i mean that was the fifth pick that we made in this draft and just to bring it up 
it's the first time since 1969 that the Patriots drafted five straight offensive players. Yeah, that's Did right. You know that, so that's I, uh, I, I, that's, that's pretty cool uh, to see that they're, they're really focused on the offensive side, which is is what we need. I mean, right. really, if you look at it, our defense is very good. Oh yeah, you know, and so we really focused in this draft on getting offensive guys. Well, it's funny you say that because with the sixth pick in round six, pick one eighty, we took the only defensive player we took in the whole draft, and that's cornerback Marcellus yep. Dial out of South Carolina. Yep, the Gamecocks. I, I looked into this kid, and unfortunately, you know, I didn't see he did much last year. He didn't have any interceptions. He didn't have much tackles. He, I think, he had one forced fumble. I mean. But that just means people stayed away from him, usually. Right, right. That's not a bad thing. No, I mean, no, I'm not. 4.4640. Just... He's got speed. Speed. He's only 5'11". He's not the biggest guy in the world. But they might move him inside. I mean, to free, to free safety, I heard. So, you know, that would help a lot. With the, He's got great ball instincts, I read. So, I mean, this could be a hit or miss. I mean, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's fairly quick and... Great ball instincts is what you want to see. So Yeah, so, I mean, if it works out, I'm glad to have him. With the seventh pick, round six, pick 193, we took quarterback Joe Milton III out of Tennessee. Gerard Mayo being a Tennessee guy, he was a volunteer. He saw this kid. I'm not going to lie, man. This kid looks like he could be very electric. I mean, obviously, he's not going to get playing time, I'm assuming. Yeah. But he seems like a pure athlete, man. Drop I, some I, packages for this guy. I saw... Well, I read the funniest thing about him. So little ball control, but Alex Barth of Catch-22, he, he said, if you need a quarterback to throw the ball 80 yards, <laughs> Joe Milton the third, your guy. If you need a quarterback to throw five yards, Joe Milton will throw it 80 yards. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly the dude's got a cannon as well, and, he, and he's versatile. He can run, he can throw. Let's see what he can do. I mean, drop some packages for the guy, man. We'll see how he does in preseason. Yeah, I, I mean... It's it's good to have. I mean, four QBs on the roster though. I don't think that's happening. No. But I see. I don't unless see, they move him somewhere for you know special teams. Or you know, I see him making the practice squad. But I'm be honest. I don't see Zappy making the roster. I mean, he might. But yeah, you, if if it's if they like this kid a lot, then Zappy will be gone. Right. You know what I mean? Simple as that. And with our last draft pick, round seven, pick two thirty one, we took a tight end by the name of Jaheim Bell out of Florida State. Now this guy is interesting because for a tight end, he's listed at six two. That's really not that tall for a tight end. So I'm wondering if this kid, you know, is he going to be playing some split out receiver? I mean, I, if he makes the roster, which who knows if he does, obviously, he could be the third tight end behind Hunter Henry and Austin Hooper. You know, have that yeah. athletic tight end kind this of small kid, with speed. Yeah, that's what I read. He'd kind of be a hybrid. He'd be a hybrid player. He's not good at blocking. He's small for tight end, but four six one. 40 yard speed and that's pretty good for a tight end right they use them in special packages and different things like that and move them around you know like you said they, their main focus in that draft was the offense primarily you know they, they knew they had to do something with the offense the defense was roughly a top five defense last year so now going into this season i'm not surprised they did i wouldn't be surprised they did every pick offense i was yeah. surprised actually when they picked the corner yeah yeah i mean our defense is stat good good stuff good stuff well Let's bring uh, some fire to this uh, episode. It's time for the lava round. We're going to talk about sleepers, our way too early sleepers. Way too early. <laughs> for fantasy football. Uh, I think I speak for me and Keith when I say if you're in my league or his league or any of our leagues, it's time to either shut our show off or put your earmuffs on. We don't want you taking our guys. So <laughs> don't listen to anything we're saying right now. Um, we're kind of giving uh, the tricks of the trade away here. So Right, uh, right. Keith, we're going to start off. Why don't we start off with your two quarterback sleepers this year? And this is, again, way too early. These could change. Very and they will so. change. They will change. But this is our way too early sleepers. <laughs> so as of right now, one of my sleeper quarterbacks that I have, Frank, is Will Levis of the Titans. I like it. How can you not look at this guy and say, hey, let me put him on my fantasy team with the team that just got formed around him? We talked about it last week. DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Tyler Boyd, Tony Pollard, Chigo Konku, Tajay Spears. He's got a loaded offense, man. I know those last two guys weren't really like high caliber players, but again, within those other playmakers that they have, those guys could be very formed and be very essential. Yeah. And think about it, all the defenders are going to be covering those other guys. Will Levis, I feel, could have a really good he year. He could be good. He so really I, good. I got him listed as a sleeper for one of my sleeper quarterbacks. What about you, Frank? I I have, well, my first one, if he can stay away from the massage powers, I think Deshaun Watson coming back fully healthy with that team. I mean, they just brought in Jerry Judy as well, yep. who's never had a 1,000-yard season. Yep. I mean, right. he, you, you, you figure Amari Cooper 
is going to draw a lot of attention. I think Judy could have a good season too. He's one of my sleepers also um, for wide receiver. But yeah, I think uh, again, Deshaun Watson could come back. He was a perennial top ten. Easily. You know what I mean? Easily. He was always putting up numbers. So. You know, they have a good team. I mean, look at what Joe Flacco did in the few games. He started. This is Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. You know, that's he's coming as old off as me. the couch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's, you know, he's probably one of the guys you can get real late. And, you know, again, it's a, it's a hope and a prayer, obviously. But Absolutely. You know. No, I, I like that one for sure. I think you might be surprised by my second quarterback Here. sleeper. And uh, he didn't have a really good first year, but he was the first overall pick last year. I'm going to go with Bryce Young Bryce of the Panthers. Bryce Young, interesting. So the reason I say this, um, obviously last year, Bryce Young was sacked 62 times. That's disgusting. That's way too much. <laughs> this offseason so far, the Panthers brought in two good offensive linemen to kind of help that out. Robert Hunt from Miami and Damian Lewis from Seattle. You know, not huge. And Robert Hunt's actually a really good guard. He's actually a top five guard in the league. Yep. So they brought him in to kind of help out with that protection. They acquired Deontay Johnson from the Steelers, and they drafted Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. And that kid, I mean, I can't fully understand when he's talking sometimes yeah which is hilarious he, he's a southern boy man <laughs> but i'm gonna tell you right now xavier leggett looks like he could be a real problem for the league patriots are actually interested in him too yeah, yeah, the, if the panthers that. didn't take him at 32 he, the, he was gonna oh, yeah so i'd like to see you know bryce young definitely step up from what he had last year and i think he could and i think he could be a really good quarterback a sleeper quarterback for your fantasy team that's that's great yeah i, I mean he I think he's a little small for the NFL. I don't know what he's going to do this year, but we'll see. I, I wish nothing but the best for him. I actually took a rookie as my second well, rookie last Let's year. Let's hear it. Second year player, uh, quarterback for a sleeper is Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell from the Ra you think Raiders. So you think he, he's going to start, though, with Gardner Minshew there? I think he's going to take that job. Okay. I think he's already I, – I don't know. I, the way he played last year I thought was pretty good. They, they What they have there is pretty good. I mean, if, if Minshew wins it, then grab Minshew. But Brock Bowers – they, I mean, really, the really tight end, rookie tight he's end. unbelievable. They drafted a, uh, a uh, 35th overall second round tight end last year in Mayer. He's really good. Michael Mayer, yep. They signed Michael Gallup. They have Devontae. They have Jacoby Myers. I mean, if it's Gardner Minshew, take him. If it's Aiden O'Connell, take him. It, right now, I'm not sure which way they're going. Right. I thought Aiden played pretty well towards, towards the end last year. So if he wins the job, again, way too early right now to know. But whoever wins that job, whether it's Gardner or Aiden, and Gardner played well when he came in too. Yeah. Either one the of them last year. wouldn't be a bad late, late pick I if agree. you needed a backup guy on your bench that you had a spot start or if your primary quarterback gets hurt. This These guys could have pretty good seasons, either one of them. That's the only thing I was – I agree with you on that. But the only thing I was questioning is uh, right now it seems like Gardner, Minshew, and him are in a 50-50 That's competition what I mean. They're right, right now. They're together. And if, if they really like Aiden moving forward for the future – you know, maybe give him the reins. I could see him starting, though, just to kind of show, like, hey, man, we gave you a chance last year to yep. see what you can do this year. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll what see how those for, guys do. For running backs. It's for running backs, huh? So I actually have a Patriot for my first running back sleeper. I like it. I like it. Antonio Gibson. I had a feeling you were going there. So I did. a lot of people, Antonio Gibson, know, you know, he came from Washington. Uh, his rookie year, he was a 1,000-yard rusher. But people don't realize that when he was in college, he was actually a wide receiver. He transitioned to running back. Now, being on the Patriots, mind you, new era, new playbook, new offensive coordinator, the whole nine. I feel like, especially if it's Jacoby Brissett or even Drake May, he's going to be a security blanket for them. He's going to be catching passes out of the back. He's going to be running the ball, obviously. But people don't realize, too, last year with Washington, he was split out wide as a receiver for the most reps out of any running back in the NFL. He um, was. He was split out a lot. Yeah, he did. And I really feel like the Patriots are going to kind of utilize him because of his athletic ability to catch the ball out of the backfield or line him up in the slot. You got Ramondre there still. Oh, yeah. Gibson is a great player. Yeah, so I think he, he just could be a good to, sleeper pick Ball for sure. control is a big thing right. for him. If he, you know, he can't fumble like he has in the past. That's the right. biggest thing. Absolutely. But other than that, yeah, I think he's a, he's a great one. My first running back, which is this is a real stretch, but I think it's somebody that played fairly well when Joe Mixon got hurt last year. And he was a rookie last year, a late rookie, uh, Chase Brown. That's you know, that's it, so it, funny. That's who I have, too. Really? That's, that's, so that's I took I have Chase too. Brown as – because, I mean, he's only got Zach, uh, Zach Moss in front of him. Yep. He that's what I put. He averaged over four yards a carry, um, and he's pretty explosive. I, I feel like he – you know, so what do you have on him? I, I like him a lot. It's funny you took him, too. So that that is funny. So it's funny you say that, Chase Brown. Obviously, the Bengals lost Joe Mixon, and ahead of him is Zach Moss, who didn't play bad with Indy last he's year. Okay. But he was, he was there while JT was serving the suspension yep. and stuff like that. 
But Chase Brown looked very explosive as Way a rookie. Explosive. I mean, even one game, he had a three-catch, 80-yard, one-touchdown game yep. in that offense with those dynamic weapons that the Bengals had. I, I see this kid having a bigger role, and I feel like they're going to utilize him a lot in the passing game, just like Antonio Gibson. I love it. So I definitely say you look out for him in your later rounds. He'd definitely help you out. My second running back is actually Zeke going back to Dallas. Zeke. And I, I mean, I thought he played well for us. He did. When, towards, towards the end towards of the end, season. Well, Ramonde got hurt. Yep. Zeke came in. He played well. He's going back to Dallas with a chip on his shoulder, I think. And, you know, he's got something to prove. Still. I, I mean, mean, that that is a good sleeper. I like that. Just like a late round sleeper because they don't have Paul anymore. I mean, there's a bunch of question marks. The kid's going to score touchdowns on that team. You know, there's no doubt. So I, I think that's a you know he's not gonna be. He was a perennial first round pick, second round pick right, at the latest for a lot of years. You know, so that, but I mean, even getting him late, it, it can't hurt. So know? I like that because behind him is Rico Dowdle yep. and Deuce Vaughn, who I actually thought was gonna be a, a Deuce, big star yeah. coming out of the preseason. I thought they were gonna utilize. I think him he's more. a little small, but he's he just, is. He's I thought just, he's that was the only thing with him. He's he's a pretty good player though. Darren Sproles type, but again, yeah. it didn't work out. So. Yeah, I like that one, though, Zeke. And we both got Chase Brown. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for your three receivers? You can start with one, two, three, whatever you want. I already told you one of mine. Jerry Judy just goes hand-in-hand -hand with Deshaun Watson. Never had a 1,000-yard season yet, and I think this year he could he could get over the top on that. So that was my first one. What do you got? So one of my sleepers, I got Jamison Williams from the Lions. I like that pick. So he, for his size especially, he's a speedster, man. He is very fast. And it's funny, too, because we all know how in Madden they can be very horrible with the speed the ratings. The ratings and stuff. You know, the yeah. attributes. A lot of the guys are like, what? How are you doing that? They gave this man a 98 speed. That speaks that's volumes. That's Randy Moss You know, speed. obviously that's just <laughs> Randy Madden. Randy Moss was 99. Think, but right? you have other guys <laughs> out there that, that look like they could be 97 speeds. They list them at 90. Yeah, that's I mean, crazy. they got him at a 98. So with also them, the Lions not having Josh Reynolds anymore, you yeah. know, Amon Ross St. Yep. Brown is still there, but behind Amon Ross St. Brown is Khalif Raymond and Sam Laporta, who's the tight end. Yeah, Laporta. Yeah. I see Jameson Williams having a breakout year. I like that pick, yeah. I do. Who do you got for your second wide out? Another Patriot. We got Demario Pop Douglas. I like Demario. He had, I had him on my fantasy team. I, I, I think, picked him up. I think and in he your played league, well. I think in your Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. My league, I drafted him actually you last drafted pick. Him. Yeah. I, I picked him up on the waivers. He got me consistently. He was getting me 10 to 14 points. Nothing too crazy, but he was very consistent as my third receiver. And it was uh, he was pretty good. So it's funny you say that, Frank. Because he had three straight games with 10-plus fantasy points. And that was with atrocious quarterback yes. play. So that speaks volumes in a rookie for it, especially he a late-round rookie. He was consistently getting me points, yeah. Not only that, but he had four straight games with five or more receptions, again, with atrocious quarterback play. Yep. So that right there, I think that he's going into his second season. He's going to be a breakout candidate. I'm excited to see what he can do for us. That's my guy. I like that guy. Uh, we talked a little bit about Marvin Harrison Jr., which he's a rookie. He's, I think he's going to have a good year. I don't think he's going to be a sleeper because they'll probably get drafted pretty early. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, my next one Gabe Davis. I know they have Kirk still. Um, I think they still have Christian Kirk, right? Yeah, they do. So Kirk's obviously had a great year last year, but I, I like Gabe Davis' speed. I like Gabe Davis uh, a lot, actually. I thought he had a great year two years ago. Last year, he did not do much with Josh Allen. But I think he'll be pretty good with Trevor Lawrence. I, I I do like Gabe Davis. So yeah, that's if Trevor Lawrence doesn't get hurt. Mac Jones comes in. Yeah, plays Ma if Patriots. Mac Jones comes in, then you can <laughs> just drop Gabe Davis immediately. Yeah, man, I agree. And then for my third receiver sleeper, I have Xavier Worthy of the Chiefs. Oh, okay, that's a good. Another one. guy the Patriots that's were looking one. at. I would have loved it if we got He's this guy. He's a speedster. He's the definition of a speedster, He's Frank. The speedster. He broke the forty-yard dash yep. record. Four point two one. Two one. Yeah. He better be a 99 speed in Madden. He better be 100 speed in Madden. I mean, they had Devin Hester at that. That's but let me tell crazy. you something. With him going to the Chiefs, that was a best case scenario for him. He's going to be playing the Tyreek Hill role, which the Chiefs have been looking to get back. I mean, they got Marquise Brown, who's also fast. But let's face it, he deals with a lot of injuries. So they're hoping that Xavier Worthy can provide a role where he's going to be going out there getting end arounds like Tyreek Hill was. He could be in for a large role, especially with Rasheed Rice being suspended possibly half the season. Yeah. I agree. I agree. For my sleeper tight end, uh, I have Jonu Smith of the Dolphins, a Jonu former, Smith. a former Patriot. You love the former Patriots. Right, Patriots. man. Come it. on, man. You know my draft team. I and, love and it. That's why it was so bad last year. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Jonu Smith, last year he had a career high with 582 receiving yards with the Falcons, and that again was with atrocious quarterback play. Now, obviously, he had another tight end next to him in Kyle Pitts, who also wasn't getting much volume due to the horrendous quarterback play. But with him having a career high last year and coming to this Miami team that's got electric speed all around him, 
I think that's going to make him more efficient, Frank. Yeah. And I also think his touchdown ceiling is higher than it's ever been. My only thought with it, I mean, he's on his speed is crazy, but they have a lot of melts to feed. That's, yeah, exactly. You're going to see he is going to get some points, but that's, I mean, they've had tight ends there that just have underperformed from a fantasy standpoint because of all the mouths to feed. Right, right. You know, so he, that's my only concern with him. But his athletic ability is unbelievable. He, he's going to catch touchdowns in the red zone. Yeah, so. I, I think Jonu Smith, I think with the Dolphins, I mean, you know, obviously I'm not a fan of the Dolphins. I don't want to see anybody on that team do well yeah. unless I have him on my fantasy team. Yep. But Jonu Smith, I think he's going to fare well with them. I honestly do. I like it. I like it. I got, uh, actually, speaking of Kyle Pitts, I have Kyle Pitts. As a sleeper. As wow. my sleeper. So, I mean, he's going to fall. He's underperformed every year. Right. And people are drafting Not behind. fully his fault, though, It's No, opinion. but now they got Kirk Cousins. You know, they Stable have stuff. Quarterback. Exactly. So, I mean, I feel like Kirk Cousins is a gunslinger. It's going to get him more targets. That was my first tight end. Who do you got for your second? My second tight end sleeper is a tight end from the Broncos named Greg Dulcich. Oh, he was my guy last year. He got hurt. He I got like hurt. him a lot. So, at, as of right now, he's at the top of the Broncos depth chart. Like Frank just said, he got hurt last year. The year before, he had 33 catches, 411 yards, and two touchdowns. Now, going into this year where you're either going to have Zach Wilson or a rookie in Bo Nix, you know, those rookies, especially struggling quarterbacks, they look at the tight ends as a security blanket. It is, and they're going to be playing from behind a lot, I feel like, this right. year. So, yeah, they're going to have to throw a lot. They've lost, They like you said, they lost Jerry Judy. I drafted this kid in, like, three he, leagues He's got year. a lot of potential, and yeah. I feel like Russell Wilson was going to really start to utilize him more if it wasn't for him getting hurt last yep. year. I got, uh, so, my second tight end, I don't know how much of a sleeper this is now, but I, I feel like Dalton Kincaid, now that Diggs is gone, Gabe Davis is gone. I mean, there's a ton of targets to be had in Buffalo. I know they have Knox also, so you can pick and choose which guy you want to go. But I like Kincaid. I think he's going to be uh, he's going to be pretty good. So I figured my sleeper defense, Frank, uh, I'm going to have to name a random team here. Not really random. They were towards the bottom of the list in defensive rankings last year. Tennessee Titans. Yeah, I like that. They acquired a lot of good talent on that defense this offseason. They brought in Legereus Sneed from Kansas City, Shadobi Awuzie from the Bengals, who is very underrated in my opinion. I wanted yeah. the Patriots yep. to try to go out and get him. He's got speed. He's a good nickel corner. Then you got the linebacker Kenneth Murray from the Charges they also got. I and like Murray. He's young. He's fast, man. And add in all those pieces with they already had Harold Landry, Boston College product, oh, yeah. Yeah. beast. Jeffrey Simmons on the D-line, beast. Big, yeah. And then Arden Key, the linebacker, who had six sacks, two forced fumbles last year. I like the Titans a lot. They, they were, yeah, I think they're going to be good this year. So That's I'd say if you're in a position, you're getting your defense late, you're in a jam, I'd say take a look at Tennessee. That's exactly who I had. Wow. I like the Titans, yeah. I like the, if you, especially, again, late. I, again, late. That's the... That's the team to grab. If you have to grab a late one, yep. the Titans are the way to go just for the same reason. I just think that, too. I mean, they're stacked on offense and defense. They're, they're going to be good this year. They are. I really feel like they're going to surprise a lot of people, Frank. Yeah, I agree. That's what about kickers? Kickers' lives matter. <laughs> just kidding. We don't talk about kickers. Well, uh, I that's... had a couple of rookies just to talk about briefly that I wrote down, and I had a kind of a bold prediction that I'll, I'll say, but Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors from the Giants. Giants. Kid's going to be real good. Big talk about him fast, and uh, th again, I feel like they're gonna have to throw like crazy. So he could be somebody. And then Jonathan Brooks, Panthers. Hubbard is, you know, a starter. You're talking about Bryce Young. This kid looks good. Hubbard, you can, it, you know, can be overtaken pretty easily. Hubbard's a good, you know, is right. a good catching back. He's an okay running back. Right. But that kid, again, a late rookie. Take a stab at him late. And if I'm gonna name two rookie breakout sleepers, in my opinion, Frank, I'm gonna go with. Running back from the Cardinals, Trey Benson. Like um, pick, yeah. he, he's in an offense where he's really behind only James Conner on the on the running back depth. Yep. And I feel like with Conner's injury history, he's going to be primed to get into involved in the offense and play some games, maybe even start some games. Yeah. So I, yep. I'd be on the lookout for him. And then also I talked about him earlier, Panthers wide receiver Xavier Leggett. Yeah, Leggett. I, I really think this dude's a dog. He just eats, sleeps, and breathes football. And he's going to go into Carolina, and he's going to actually probably be the top receiver there going into next season. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, from Bean Town, or as I like to call it, we like to call it Title Town, to your town. Thanks for listening. Stay wicked, Pissa. From the TD Garden to your garden, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Take care, everybody.